Okay, let's look at these three atoms. So we have carbon over here, um, which bottom number is the number of protons. So this will have six protons. It will have six electrons. Take the mass number, subtract the bottom number, the number of protons, and that gives us that it has six neutrons. However, over here, we have another type of carbon. And you can see the only difference is that the mass number is different, which means this will also have six protons and six electrons. And that's what makes carbon carbon. Okay, It's actually those six electrons and the way they're arranged in the shell that allows it to look the way it does and to react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Um, these two atoms will be identical in every single way apart from this has one more neutron in the nucleus. Okay, and that just makes that atom slightly heavier. Okay, so it gives a slightly more mass, hence a bigger mass number, but it doesn't actually change anything about it chemically. Likewise, over here we have carbon 14, still atomic number of six, that's what makes it carbon, gives it six electrons. However, this will have eight neutrons. Okay, we call atoms that have the same atomic number, six here, six here, six here, but different mass numbers, 12, 13, 14. We call them isotopes, okay? Two ways of saying this. Isotopes are things that have the same atomic number, but different mass numbers, or we could say that they're atoms that have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons, okay? Either of those definitions work. Um, there are lots of different isotopes of lots of different atoms okay so another example down here is chlorine you can have a little go yourselves so at trying to work out the number of protons electrons and neutrons for each of those um in chemistry the only difference between them isn't how they react it's the mass of the products that it forms um the reason we're interested in isotopes in physics is really nuclei as far as you know should not exist because a nucleus contains, even if we just take helium, two, four, that will contain two protons, two neutrons, two electrons, which means our nucleus, if we drew it like this, there's a proton, there's a proton, there's a neutron, there's a neutron. Neutrons are neutral, protons are positively charged, positively charged things repel each other, and the protons should really repel each other, and the nucleus should just break apart, it shouldn't exist. Um, however, there's another force that holds the nucleus together. It's called the strong force. You don't really need to know this bit. But the neutrons essentially provide the glue that holds the nucleus together. Now, it has to be just the right amount of glue. If there's too little neutrons, the nucleus won't be stable. If there's too many, it won't be stable. You need just the right amount. So the reason we're interested in isotopes in physics is some of them are stable and some of them are not. So if we look at our carbon, all carbon has an atomic number of six. So we don't really have to refer to that, but we would call this one here carbon 12. And it is stable. By that, we just mean it will never change from what it is. It will always stay as carbon. However, carbon 13 is unstable and carbon 14 is unstable. Um, and we describe those unstable nuclei as being radioactive. At some point in the future, they will disintegrate, i.e. they will change what they are. They will emit some type of radiation in a random manner. Um, and it's that that the rest of this booklet is interested in. Okay, So some isotopes are stable and some aren't. The ones that aren't will disintegrate in the future and emit radiation.